Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about here, um, and like I said, I um, it's I probably won't only will go about another 15 minutes here, so if you guys want to stick around, otherwise I could definitely use a nap after we're done, uh, to be honest. But um, So I want to talk about, uh, well, let, let me sketch out kind of an example here. We have some uh, frame S prime, and now let's say you have some, so, so it's moving here at some speed V as is normal. I didn't orient that properly, who cares? Uh, but now let's say within your S prime, you know, reference frame, let's say it's a moving ship or something like that. There is some particle that is moving or, or, or an ant that's crawling around in the spaceship or something like that. And that ant is crawling around with some velocity. I'm going to call it U. I don't want to call it V because we're already using V here. But there's an ant that's crawling around that spaceship. And within the spaceship, you measure that ant's velocity to be U prime. This is the uh, so it's velocity of object uh, as measured in S prime. And now notice the way I've drawn that. We're not we're not mandating that this velocity be in the same direction as v. So V, we're still saying is going in the X direction relative to like any other frame, but this velocity U within that spaceship or within the prime system can be in any direction in the X prime, Y prime, Z prime axes. So the question that I'm asking here, now again, if we have some Earth observer and we're gonna call his frame S as is conventional, what I wanna know is when he looks up there, What is he going to measure? What is the velocity u as measured in s? So there's a spaceship. We know how fast something is going inside the spaceship. We know how fast the spaceship is going relative to the person. We should be able to basically combine those in some fashion to make a solid prediction on his perceived velocity based on those two velocities to him. So we're trying to connect u prime to u somehow. Now, to do this, I want to backtrack just a tad, and we're going to work out how to do this in the Galilean transformation system, um, which, and that's, that's going to be a little bit more simplistic. So once we see how to do it using Galilean transforms, then we're going to put everything into the Lorentz transform notation. It'll work exactly the same way, but it's just slightly more complicated. So again, the simplistic case, and this is not the full solution uh, according to relativity, of course, because we need to use Lorentz transforms. But let's go ahead and try this here. And um, to do this, let's, how do I want to, yeah, let's, let's assume uh, we know u prime want to find u. So, first of all, recall. Actually, let, uh, before we go to that, um, so first of all, by definition, what does it mean to be u prime? What is a velocity as measured in a reference frame s prime? Now, I mean that might sound like a dumb question, but it's not at all. It's it's a much less obvious question, I think, that than you might give it credit for. And the way that we talk about that here is, and let, let's consider just motion in the x direction here. Um, so I'm going to derive it for the x direction and then we'll allow it to be in the y direction. So um, let's see. Yeah, again, I'm going to limit only to motion in the x for now. We will relax that. So u prime here, by definition, it is dx prime over dt prime. And by the way, so we are assuming motion only in the x prime for now. And this makes perfect sense. It's how much space we're covering as measured by s prime divided by how much time elapsed, again, as measured by the same person. So those primes there are, are not only important, but they're absolutely required. 
that if you were trying to calculate, calculate this using like dx or dt without the primes, those would not be the, 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 the uh, distance or the time interval as measured by the, the guy in the spaceship. So all three of those primes have to be there for this to be consistent. And then now, recall, and we did this, I think, like day two of the, uh, of the semester or so, the Galilean transforms look like this. Uh, for Again, for, for motion in the x direction, we have x prime equals x minus vt. Remember, this is uh, essentially the, the defining equation for Galilean transforms. We had y prime equal y, z prime equals z, and t prime equal t. So in this case here, according to Galilean transformations, dx prime, I'm going to take the derivatives here, equal, or the, the infinitesimals, dx minus v dt, dy prime equals dy, dz prime equals dz, dt prime equals dt. So in this case here, dx prime over dt prime, which again is what we're calling u prime. So let me put that on the very left-hand side. u prime equals dx prime over dt prime. Now, all I have to do is put that on the top, put this on the bottom. So dx minus v dt over dt. And now I'm just going to distribute that dt from the bottom. So this now becomes dx over dt minus v dt over dt. And hopefully you can all see that dt over dt is 1. And this is the more interesting one. dx over dt is actually, it, it looks a lot like that, except here is dx prime over dt prime. That's what we call u prime. So this is actually going to be the motion of that, or the velocity of that ant, or the particle, or whatever, as measured in s. So this is simply u, the velocity without a prime. And this whole thing on the left-hand side had equaled u prime to start. So our equation now becomes u prime equals u minus v. And that's, by the way, if u is in the x direction. Now, this looks a little bit different if you're, if you're looking at... Um, by the way, um, actually, this works exactly the same if you do put all of those as vectors. So I don't need to make that constraint. Um, the analysis works exactly the same way in the y direction and in the z direction. So in that case there you really can just make a more general statement saying this is how velocities always transform according to Galilean transformations. So that's the simplistic look. This is how to do that analysis, find the relative velocity in one frame if you know its velocity in the other. And by the way, you can just invert those. So if you know what u prime is and you know what v is, you just rearrange a little bit. Um, so we haven't used Lorentz transformations, but the way that we did this is exactly going to match. We took the dx dt, had the prime coordinates there. We used our transformation laws to then turn them into differentials. And then now when we put those together, you can replace like dx's and dt's with u's, exactly what we're looking for in the first place. So we're going to do exactly the same thing, but now we're going to do them with Lorentz transforms. By the way, I, I used to hear stories about a legendary professor at Harvard who um, he was left-handed and he would fill up the entire blackboard and then start back where it began. Um, and using just an eraser in his right hand, he would write here and erase directly in front of him. So there was always 100% of blackboard coverage. I can't possibly do that, but. Um. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this whole thing again, but this time we're gonna specifically use our Lorentz transforms and we're gonna analytically do it uh, that way instead of using our Galilean transformation laws. So again, we're going to assume that u prime equals dx prime over dt prime. And I, I am going to focus here, let's say, no motion 
in y and z. So we don't need to worry about any changes in y or z. We'll come back to that or I'll let you guys do it on a problem set in the future. But now we're going to use these transformations. And you should memorize these at some point. So I'm not even going to bother with the y and the z. We, we already know that's not even going to come into play. So let's look at the x and the, and the t here. And specifically, let's look at dx prime. I'm going to write it in terms of the right-hand side equals gamma, that's a constant, times dx minus v dt. And then dt prime, same thing. And the reason why I wrote them like that is we can literally just divide the two equations. So nice thing is we see that the gammas cancel. So we have u prime equals dx minus v dt and dt minus v over c squared dx. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on both sides, sorry for the delay, I'm going to divide by dt. And obviously you're allowed to do that if you do the same thing on both sides. And now I'm going to do, so on the top side, I'm going to look at these separately. On the top part of the fraction, I'm going to distribute the 1 over dt. So this becomes dx over dt minus v dt over dt. And hopefully you can see here now dx over dt is just u, and this just becomes v. So by the way, that's exactly what the Galilean transformation looked like there. But there is more to it now, because we have the bottom side of the fraction. So there's the top. So now, the bottom side, when you distribute that 1 over dt, this now becomes dt over dt, of course, minus v over c squared dx dt, or here, hopefully you can see 1 minus, now this becomes u, so I'm going to call it u v over c squared. So I'm going to combine everything now, and I'm going to say u prime equals dx prime over dt prime, and now as we know, it's going to be the top here, u minus v over 1 minus uv over c squared. And that is what our u prime is. And that's it. That, that's the end of our derivation. Um, that's exactly how you transform velocities. One last thing. We had said that all of this was velocity in the x. And just to be very clear on that, let's go ahead and directly indicate that now. So this only corresponds to velocity transformations in the x direction. And of course the inverse transformation is going to happen when instead of something going to the right with a speed v, you look from the opposite direction. If you want to transform from prime to unprime, you just look at it as if the velocity is going opposite. So this just becomes a plus for the inverse transformations. I'm just I'm going to leave it as a minus there. But if you're going in one direction, you have a minus. If you're going the other direction, it becomes a plus. Honestly, it doesn't matter what you call either of the two coordinate systems as long as you're consistent about you know, putting the primes or unprime there. Now, for what it's worth, it works slightly differently in the y and z directions. But just as, as kind of a preview, here's, here's something that you end up kind of uh, somewhat surprisingly find. We do know, or, or you will find, that uy prime won't actually equal uy and uz prime won't actually equal uz. So I'm not proving that here, but I'll explain why that's true. Going in the x direction, 
Um, so if you're moving in the X direction, clearly we know if there's motion that time is going to be dilated. So time is going to be different, time is slower, and the distances change as well. So the combination of both the, the, time, the change in distance and the uh, change in time results in this shifted formula. Now, I don't want to go into analytically what, you know, how that works, but what I will say, though, is if instead of going in the X direction, you're going in the Y direction, now, the distance that you're going to the Y won't change. If one person measures a distance of one light year in the Y direction, any observer who's moving at a perpendicular distance or perpendicular to that direction will also say one light year. So the perpendicular distances don't change. However, if one person is seen, if, if a moving observer is seeing something moving up in the Y axis, the distance he's covering is going to be the same, but the time that two observers say that it takes to get from point A to point B will be slightly different. I hope that makes sense. So in other words, if one person measures a speed of 20 you know, meters per second up, due to time dilation between two different frames, the other person might see that motion as at a slightly different speed because their time is going at a different rate. Even though they measure the spatial separation to be the same, the time difference creates a different velocity there. So that's why those two things won't match, even though the distances in the Y and the Z are the same. Um, all right, so the, um, I'm exhausted. I feel like I'm not making any sense here, but that just happens when I talk too much in a day. Um, if you guys have questions, I, I'm more than happy to go through any of this. Uh, my, my encouragement, though, is to don't dwell too much on the, on the theory you don't quite understand, because I think once you actually go to start doing problems on this and plugging in values, which there will be problems about everything we covered here, um, either in this problem set or the next one, but once you start actually going to the process of, of solving problems based on this, things will start to click a lot more than simply seeing the, the theoretical view that I'm pointing out.